all right hello everyone and welcome to the month of september i hope you had a beautiful august and i pray that you're looking forward to another beautiful month this is the day that the lord has made we rejoice and we are glad in it so um today we're just going to get quickly started um i want to welcome everybody to this live broadcast and i also want to welcome everybody who will be watching this class at a later date or watching the replay thank you for being here so before we go very far we'll begin with a word of prayer um thank you father god for this day this is the day that you have made we rejoice we are glad in it we thank you for the new month we thank you for bringing us through from january up until now and we thank you as even as we enter the last portions of the year we pray that your grace will go ahead of us i commit the broadcast into your hands i pray that the people will be blessed the people will be empowered to learn how to use essential oils and um, to manage their sleep and i thank you because the bible actually tells us that you give your beloved rest and thank you because we are your beloved lord um i commit myself into your hands i commit the broadcast into your hands and i just pray for smooth flow all the way in jesus name i pray amen and amen okay so um this month's wellness topic is really just going to be um talking about sleep and we're going to be talking um about different facets of sleep and how essential oils can support you in that area so um let me keep going here so for those of you who don't know me and those of you who are new to my channel my name is Brian. i'm very excited that you're here so i have been using essential oils from 20 actually 2010 to be precise but i have been using doTERRA essential oils since 2015 so this actually marks my eighth year having used um doTERRA so along the way i discovered that i really enjoyed teaching and empowering people how to use essential oils and my teaching philosophy really is centered around everyday aromatherapy one of the the biggest um blessings that having multiple essential oil companies or rather having the popularity of essential oils um skyrocket skyrocket over the last decade or so is that more people essential oils have become more accessible to people and what that means is that People have learned how to use essential oils to support their wellness. And this is what I do. I have I host these monthly wellness classes to teach you how to use essential oils as a wellness support every day safely and effectively. So um, please know that this is an informational webinar. My classes are for information purposes and they're not intended to replace proper medical advice. And the information I'm sharing here is drawn from research, knowledge, training, and personal experience, specifically with doTERRA essential oils. Um, I do encourage you to practice due diligence and um, to seek out qualified healthcare um, advice in the event that you need it. But if you're here and you just want to know how can essential oils support my sleep, I'm happy to, you're welcome, feel very welcome, and, and I pray that you will pick up one or two things that you can begin to um, you can begin to incorporate into your everyday self-care routines to help you sleep better. If you haven't already, I'd urge you to kind of go through my channel. I have a whole wellness playlist and it has um, about six or seven wellness classes that I have taught every month from February up until now. And God willing, we will continue until. There's so much to teach and learn about using essential oils. And even as I teach you like this, I also keep learning new information. Um, so today's class is going to be um, multifaceted as all my classes are. And one of the things I love doing when I'm teaching about um, essential oils is to bring in a holistic approach. There are so many um, factors that can influence or affect how we use essential oils. So I like to give like a, a total 360 view and I like building up from one place and then bringing us to a logical conclusion. So today we're going to be talking about a few, uh, we're going to be um, talking about sleep and why it's important. We're going to um, understand a bit about the sleep cycle, our body's natural rhythm, and then we're going to um, just hone in on three sleep hormones in particular. We're going to talk about sleep hygiene and what you can begin to do to sleep better. 
we're going to talk about why you, you should use essential oils and how to use essential oils to support your sleep. And lastly, I'm just going to give you some suggestions on essential oil singles and blends that would be useful in um, improving your sleep cycles. So let's just start here. Um, we know that people say that um, we need at least eight hours of sleep a night. And the question is why? Because there's also another school of thought that says if you're sleeping, when you're sleeping in one part of the world, in another part of the world, people have woken up. So because of the hustle and nature of human beings to consistently grind and run, many people are kind of letting their sleep patterns go down. So the main thing about sleeping is that sleep is the only time that your body really has to rejuvenate itself to replenish itself to recuperate and to recover that is the most important thing about sleep so as you sleep your brain will process information stimuli memories and it will sort through information so adequate sleep will also enhance your focus and attention learning memory and creativity so you will find that when you sleep well, when you have a good night of sleep, you're more able to focus and to be attentive. Compare this to see if you have two hours of sleep and you have to have coffee to help wake you up. So when you're sleeping, um, please don't mind my son in the background. It, it comes in the territory. So when you're sleeping, your body will rejuvenate your cells. It will rest, it will recuperate, and it will undergo processes that are essential for growth and regulating hormone. And this is why babies actually tend to sleep a lot. Because when they're sleeping, they are growing. When you're sleeping, your body is resting. When you're sleeping, your body is working on repairing what needs to be repaired. When you're sleeping, your body is recovering. And so um, you cannot miss sleep. Because if you're working from midnight to midnight with no proper sleep in between, it will definitely have an effect on your overall physical wellness in particular. And lastly, your body will repair physical and physiological damage. It will strengthen your immune system. It will balance your hormones, relax your muscles, and it will regulate neurotransmitters. And this is not possible when you're on the move or when you're you know, going everywhere here, there during the day. Your body just needs a moment of to be stationary and static so that you can just sleep and rest. I think that is one of the most important benefits, if nothing else, of sleep, that your body needs sleep in order to regenerate itself. So if your body requires sleep to regenerate, what therefore happens when you don't sleep enough? So sleeping less than seven hours triples your risk of viral infections. That's very serious. It will also lead to a disruption of your immune system. It will cause a low libido and reproductive health dysfunction. Long, eventually, it will cause long-term mood disorders, which influence our emotions, behavior, and decision-making abilities. You might get increased heart rate and inflammation. And when you have an increased heart rate, this has a, an effect on how you breathe, your respiratory system, because you're placing a lot more pressure on your body organs. And you can also just go back to my class on being prepared for the cold season that was done in June, which really um, addresses this issue of what an increased heart rate would do and why it will lead to more stress, more cortisol, and, and the domino effect of all that. And then lastly, it can also lead to either weight gain or stunted growth and much slower healing. Remember, we've said that one of the most important benefits of sleep is for your is that it allows your body space to rejuvenate and to regenerate itself. Okay, so we're going to talk about the sleep cycle. So the sleep cycle has is divided into five um, stages. In the first stage, when you immediately get into bed, there's a very light sleep, but muscle activity begins to slow down. In the second stage, your breathing pattern and your heart rate begins to slow down and your body temperature decreases slightly. The third stage, the deep sleep begins and then your brain starts to generate slow delta waves. And I'm sure that this is a fascinating study on alpha, de uh, alpha 
delta and beta waves and each of them has a specific function in the sleep cycle then in the fourth stage here is where there is very deep sleep and your muscle ac muscle activity is very limited this is where when you go and try and wake someone it's like really hard that's when you know somebody is deep in, in that deep sleep that they can't be woken up from and then in the last stage we have the REM REM sleep and the REM sleep is the um, random eye movement where your it's like your eyelids are quickly quickly fluttering and here your brain waves are speeding up and dreams occur and your as your heart rate also increases so we i think we cycle through these stages um a couple of times during the night um and it's just for general information that it's good to know that this is where so very light sleep where you can easily be roused awake then you get into that deep sleep where rousing you is literally like disturbing someone and then we get into the deep the dream state as the last phase of um sleeping so it is important for us to understand how our body functions our bodies function according to the circadian rhythm and the circadian rhythm is a 24 hour cycle of growth rest wakefulness etc so one of the most amazing things about our creator is that he was very intentional and deliberate in creating us and science continues to try and unpack some of these intricate um ways that we were that we were um created and so through observation science has noticed that our bodies function on a 24-hour cycle and um this cycle is largely determined by the amount of light that will hit your eyes and if it's off then your sleep gets off and when your sleep gets off then your body, body's rhythm gets off and when your body's rhythm gets off then everything begins to this is where you find irritability anger people being flustered hormones out of work so one of the things that we really want to do is to have a, a basic understanding we don't need to have an an in-depth understanding we just need to have a basic understanding of how the the circadian rhythm works and where and how we can begin to optimize it so that our bodies can function um, correctly so from between midnight and 6 a.m this is the period for restorative sleep um this is the time for deep sleep and this is also the time for REM sleep the sleep that um, leads to dreaming and so uh, midnight between midnight and six we know that, that it's, it's pretty dark by the time morning is coming from 6 a.m melatonin begins to drop melatonin is the hormone that helps us um sleep and it is produced at night so when the the first thing in the morning as the sun is coming up melatonin start melatonin levels begin melato the release of melatonin begins to drop and it makes sense because you don't want to be sleepy during the day so one of the ways that you can immediately begin to help yourself is by opening the curtains so that you can let more light in um between 6 a.m and 12 noon let me see here this is when you're, you're you should be highly alert this is when during the day you're up and about you're doing what what needs to be done then between 12 p.m and 6 p.m this is here what am i seeing that this is the time for your best coordination this is the time where you should begin to start limiting caffeine as the evening begins to approach so if you've been taking coffee during the day as you're approaching evening you want to start lowering your coffee intake and then between 6 p.m and 12 midnight uh this is where let's see what this is because i can't quite see that clearly here okay perfect so um as you wind into the evening as you're moving from evening to night because melatonin begins uh, the release of melatonin will start at around nine or within this period to prepare your body for sleep you want to start by limiting um technology use and you want to start by dimming or you also want as you're progressing through the evening you want to start by dimming the lights because you don't want your body to be under the impression that it is still day because of the amount of light and probably that's one of the reasons why many of us can't sleep because our bodies assume that it's daytime because of the amount of light that we allow into our houses so one of the the strategies or rather one of the the yeah one of the strategies 
um, that I use to help my son wind down is uh, you, things start quieting down. At a certain time when you want him to prepare for bed, things have to start quieting down. It's not the time to keep running around, watching cartoons, watching all the TV, being, you want to really begin to start winding down so that your body can know that this is the time for us to sleep. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So just having a basic understanding of the circadian rhythm would be very helpful so that you can now begin to see okay if i know that between midnight and 6 a.m this is my 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 time for me to sleep between 6 a.m and 12 noon i should be alert and and what can i do to kind of take me into the day right and then between 12 and 5 i'm also getting stuff done but 12 and 6 but between 6 and midnight I have to uh, I have to figure out a way to wind down. All right, so let's talk about the three important major hormones that um, influence our sleeping patterns. And the first one is melatonin. And I don't know if you have seen um, melatonin tablets on the market. Um, melatonin is producing the pineal gland in the brain when it is dark. So when it when your when your brain begins to see darkness, it's signifies darkness signals your brain the pineal gland in your brain to start producing melatonin melatonin will help you get to sleep by winding the body down this is very fascinating stuff to me right and so if you have if your melatonin levels are low this can lead to sleeplessness and even insomnia and so check peep this i think this fact is very interesting that if you use your phone one hour before bed you have delayed the onset of melatonin by close to three hours so if you're using your bed your if you're using your phone at 9 p.m that means that you delayed your body's winding down up until midnight wow no wonder we can't sleep because if i'm still using my phone at 10 then the earliest i'm going to start sleeping is probably at 1 a.m um so you don't want to overly stimulate yourself with alcohol caffeine tv or work remember when it begins to get that you want as much as is as is feasible and possible for you to start winding down one of the one of the strategies that mm, uh babies mothers are given to help their baby is that you want to create a bedtime routine you want your baby to start winding down early and so you begin the process like two hours before bedtime so it's like no tv make sure you have already eaten um no running around settle down have some quiet time so these tips that apply to babies also apply to adults as well and so um, one practical thing you can begin to do to help raise your melatonin levels is to just dim your lights in the evening. Don't, um, because bright light um, signals to your body that it's still daytime. So you want to start dimming your lights and just having a cool and calm environment before you go to bed. And the other thing is limit the use of technology and limit stimulating yourself. Then we have got cortisol. Now, cortisol is your body's stress stress response hormone. When you're stressed, when you're anxious, your body will secrete cortisol to help you respond quickly to danger. It's your fight or flight response hormone. Um, if you're producing cortisol consistently because you're overly stressed, it will take a serious toll on your health, including how you sleep. But it's, it first begins by taking a toll on your breathing. And I, I covered this a bit intensively, extensively rather, when I was teaching the respiratory wellness class in June. And I said that, you know, if your body is always in fight or flight, that, that really has an effect on your heart rate and it has an effect on your breathing rate. And eventually that now takes a toll on your sleep so you can reduce your cortisol by breathing by going outside by laughing by listening to music and by using adaptogenic herbs and essential oils and what adaptogenic herbs and essential oils would do is that they would help bring back a sense of balance they help you respond better to environmental and lifestyle stressors and then the last um, important hormone to take note of is serotonin and serotonin is our body's feel-good hormone which will increase positivity and relaxation as well as helping us feel all round energized so serotonin is what helps you feel awake when you get up 
the next day. So if you're deficient in serotonin, this can lead to feelings of depression and lethargy. So you want to boost your serotonin levels by opening the curtains and letting the sunlight in as much as possible. And then if you can, you can also go outside and take a moment to really breathe in the fresh air. So really, a lot of the things that we need to help get us started are very simple, like just sunlight laughing, deep breathing, stepping outside, listening to some music, uh, and, you know, just not being overly stimulated. So we want to pay attention. I've seen, like, there are a lot of there's, there's supplementation in the market currently where people who say they can't sleep well um, uh, want to take on a melatonin supplement, for example. So um, if this is something that uh, is of interest to you please seek out medical advice don't self-diagnose seek out medical advice because i also believe that they kind of do some measurements and measuring to know if this um is applicable to you or not but you can start here with these very simple things that we have said we have said you know start dimming the lights in the evening and all this is being done also so that you can you can harmonize your body with its circadian rhythm okay all right, so I found this very interesting to just um, ask what type of sleeper are you? So the dolphins are the light sleeper sleepers, and these are the ones who would typically be diagnosed um, as insomniacs. Then you've got the bears whose um, internal clocks will track the rising and the falling of the sun, and they're the ones who actually need a full eight hours of sleep. Um, lions tend to wake up really early with a lot of energy, and by, but by early evening, they are very exhausted. And then the wolves have a hard time waking up early and are most energetic in the evening. So I used to fall in the category of bears, somebody who had to have full a full eight hours of sleep. But now I'm more of a lion because um, I'm most active in the morning and I get a lot of things done in the morning. And then by the time, in fact, late afternoon is rolling by, like, I'm so exhausted. The day needs to end. So it will be interesting to hear in the comments what type of sleeper, which category you fall under. So we're getting into the next segment. We've already um, examined sleep. We've talked about the sleep cycle. We've talked about the hormones. We've talked about the benefits of sleep. We've even talked about what happens when we don't get enough sleep. So this second segment, because my classes are really about um, essential oils for wellness, we're going to talk about why essential oils are useful for sleep in the first place. So I'm just going to um, quickly do a basic um, introduction. Consider. Uh, concerning essential oils. Essential oils are the aromatic plant compounds extracted from, distilled and extracted from plants. Note, there is no such thing as um, tallow, tallow being cow fat essential oil. There's no such thing as lard essential oil. Essential oils are derived from plants. That's very important. They're the essence of the plant. That is why they are called essential oils. And so, uh, there are two things about essential oils in particular in the way I teach it that makes essential oils very useful. Number one, what makes essential oils therapeutic and that is helpful and healing to the human body is its chemical composition, its chemical properties. That's what gives essential oils that the chemical compounds found in essential oils is what gives um, gives them the therapeutic benefits. And then I teach that we essential oils is both a science and it's an art. So it's a science because of the chemical compounds. It's an art because it then becomes up to you to decide and to choose how it is you're going to use essential oils in your wellness every day. So what what is it about essential oils that would make them useful for sleep? What are these therapeutic properties they possess that we can say um, when I use an essential oil for uh, an essential oil, it becomes useful for sleep? Um, the first thing is that essential oils are anxiolytic anxiolytic uh, meaning it helps re um, not free us but it helps people it helps reduce anxiety it's calming and relaxing reducing anxiety stress fear and worry mm -hmm. essential oils are soothing to the body and may and may help overcome fatigue pain or bodily tension 
Uh, essential oils also help relieve the body of restlessness and agitation. They have a mild, some of them are mild sedatives um, by lulling the senses and your levels of alertness. So you're not always operating at, you're so stimulated, but just really helping you calm down and wind down and slow down. And then they're adaptogenic, and this is one of my favorite characteristic of essential oils. In fact, this, this is actually really, what are the characteristics of essential oils which make them useful um, as part of uh, sleep management. They're adaptogenic and they will bring balance where it's needed in the body. And lastly, they're uplifting to the senses. And that uplifting means that then your emotions also kind of you 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 don't you're not operating in in stress and worry but they just are they really smell good and so when you smell a bottle of orange for example you just feel <sighs> and and many of them really encourage you to just take a breath back so um this is the characteristics and these characteristics are actually determined by the chemistry of the essential oil and so there's a lot of science to back back that up and what you're going to do in this next segment is i'm going to give you a few essential oils and a few essential oil blends and i'm going to um, quickly highlight what their therapeutic and chemical properties are that make them suitable for sleep and one of the better known oils i'm going to be referring here to my notes one of the better known essential oils for sleep whenever anybody mentions sleep lavender is always first on the list and there's a reason for that so lavender is um lavender will help your body wind down lavender is also very relaxing and calming and soothing to the body and so um 60 over 60 percent of lavender's chemical chemistry is linanol and linanol is an alcohol which is it has a floral calming scent which helps ease feelings of stress or anxiety and so it's very relaxing so if you are looking for one oil to get you started on the path to sleeping better lavender would be it then we've got frankincense which is um calming and grounding to the senses and it is a complex mixture of monotapines um let me find that here and these monotapines include things like alpha pinene limonene alpha thugene and beta pinene they all work together to contribute to its aromatic benefits which include its ability to promote relaxation and a sense of focus so a good way also to um uh, a good blend to use would be to do lavender and frankincense and it would help really calm you down but at the same time ground you and help ease um uh what is it um help calm you and help release anxious feelings the other one is roman chamomile and roman chamomile is a floral oil so it's also very calming and relaxing to the body roman chamomile is very gentle and it's also uh one of the oils that is normally recommended for babies of course but in um babies and young children but in very dilute proportions i'm going to do a class on kids and essential oils and the precautions that you need to take when you're using essential oils with your children the other oil is magnolia and magnolia actually has a very high concentration of linanol and this alcohol is relaxing and it also provides a very pleasant and floral um, scent so i really love rolling this before going to bed and you just find it and then you just feel so peaceful and so happy and you go to sleep a happy person the other oil is vetiver and vetiver um, has sesquitapines which are carbon isovalinsinol and Cusimol. Those names are so complicated. However, these chemicals have grounding properties and it is what contributes because uh, vetiver is a very, let me just smell here. Why am I talking? I can. So vetiver is a very deep oil. Like you, when you merely smell it, you feel it, it's a very stabilizing oil. It's a very stable oil. It just has a lot of depth to it. So this, the, the chemicals present, carbon, cusimol and Isovan, hey, isovans, isovalence, what? Isovalence, no, or something like that. But these are all sesquitapines, are what contribute to its grounding effect. Then the other thing that's useful is, you know, when you mix one or two oils together, you create a blend. And what DoTerra has done is it has um, 
created these synergistic blends, meaning essential oils that have been studied for certain properties, for different chemical properties, and they've been combined to give us one beautiful product that does something. So um, I'm going to go through one, two, three, four, five, five of my favorites that are just really beautiful essential oils for sleeping. The first one is balance. If you like, if you're likely to come to me and tell me you want a multi-purpose oil to do very many things, I'm most likely to recommend balance. So balance is sweet and woody, and it is perfect for promoting um, balance and tranquility. It's infused with spruce, which is a tree oil, whole wood, blue tansy, which is a floral oil, blue chamomile, which is a floral oil, and frankincense, which is a resin. And so it's a perfect blend for stabilizing emotions, but also just really good for sleeping because you can clearly see it has frankincense and blue chamomile in it. And then we've got serenity, which is the restful blend. It is soothing. It is grounding. It contains lavender cedarwood, coriander, ylang-ylang, marjoram, roman chamomile, vetiver, and sandalwood with hints of tonka bean and vanilla absolute. And if you go through this list of ingredients very carefully, you'll see it has um, lavender, roman chamomile, ylang-ylang. These are floral oils which have linenol and are known to be relaxing and calming and uplifting in scent. And then we also have cedarwood, um, vetiver, and sandalwood, which are deeper oils that produce, uh, provide stability and grounding because these are woody oils. And if you just think about the character of woody oils, and I have done a class that really went into um, the different, uh, how these different, where, how the different oils um, help the body, depending on where they are, um, they are extracted from. So I did a, a, a class on the citrus oils, um, floral oils, the woody oils, the spice oils, and just went on to explain how this class, um, this different classifications of oil affect different body parts. And so oils that are taken from woody, the woody part are stabilizers, they are anchor oils, right? Um, what else is there? We also have marjoram and we have vanilla absolute, which are spice oils and herb oils. And these are also just good to help with, with breathing as well. Um, the, another one of my favorites really is the peace blend. And the peace blend is actually a very soft, but a really well, well-rounded blend. It has vetiver, it has lavender, it has ylang ylang, it has frank frankincense, it has clary sage, it has marjoram, it has labdanum, and it has spearmint. So you can see it's a combination of root oils, it has florals, it has a resin, and it also has tree oils. So this combination together is very useful for promoting restful sleep. Um, then we have adaptive and adaptive was actually created with mental wellness in mind it is called the calming blend and it has wild orange lavender copaiba spearmint magnolia rosemary neroli and sweet gum and you'll notice that these in the blends especially some oils are just um, show up ev almost everywhere so you've got lavender you've got magnolia you've got copaiba which is similar in chemistry to frankincense you've got roman chamomile some of these make appearances here and there which shows you the importance of these oils as calming soothing um and anxiolytic oils their properties right and then um we've got breathe This is especially useful, this is a respiratory blend and it is especially useful for people who have difficulty breathing while sleeping and you snore, right? And so that snoring kind of impedes or impairs how you sleep. So I would have uh, breathe to kind of just help you open up as you sleep. Okay, so those are some of my favorites. This is not by any means an exhaustive list, but with over 70 essential oils to choose from, sometimes it's best to just really pare down to the basics and say, okay, these are the ones that I would choose. And if it was me, if I was to start a kit, I would say um, I would take lavender and I would take balance. That's where I would start. And then as the rest go on, depending on what's going on, depending on how you're feeling, then I would now add and choose 
um, mix and match and choose other options. All right, so some sleep blend ideas that I had listed here. I had for the anxious sleeper, you would have um, adaptive. For the snorer, you would have um, eucalyptus and lavender or just plain breathe to reset your your REM sleep. I would use coriander. There would be coriander and spikenard. Then for everyday sleep, I would just choose a simple blend of lavender and, and frankincense. All right, so how then, because we've, we've gone through a bit of the science, not an exhaustive list, of course, but we've just quickly brushed through the science around um, some of the oil, the popular oils for sleep wellness. But I want to um, talk to you about how, now how exactly do we do that? So I have a bottle of lavender and then this is the art part of aromatherapy where it's up to you to find um, creative ways to incorporate essential oils into your sleep routine so that you can sleep a lot better. And um, one of the ways we use essential oils in three major ways, you can use it aromatically, topically, topically on the skin or internally but with internal use of essential oils you have to be very very careful this is not for everyone if you're not comfortable doing it if you do not trust the, your essential oils don't do it aromatic and topical benefits of essential oils is just as effective or even equal, more effective or equally as effective as the other method so um we can wrap oils on the back of the neck or you can put it on the bottoms of your feet before you go to bed. But when you're using essential oils topically, you want to um, you want to dilute it in a suitable carrier oil so that you can avoid any adverse um, allergic reactions and to properly make uh, properly dilute the essential oil. Some oils are strong, so you definitely want to have them in a carrier oil like almond oil, like jojoba, what we used to call jojoba anyway uh or coconut oil and then just quickly rub oils on the back of your neck or on the bottom of your feet like i'm showing in the picture there you can also do massage and you want to focus on using essential oils with calming relaxing soothing properties to help relax your mind to calm you down and to promote a good night's sleep so when you massage these areas um when you massage like your neck when you massage like your here your temp your your temp temples when you massage like your shoulders when you massage your feet and the um with oils like lavender with oils like frankincense with balance these just help calm and relax you then the other thing you can do is to either directly inhale from the bottle so what like what i've been doing here when i've been opening a bottle and you know just taking a deep breath in or you can take um, one or two drops i would suggest you start with one because two can be a little bit overwhelming so you take a drop put it on your hands rub your hands together and create a deep uh, ascent tent for yourself just like i'm showing in the picture that i have chosen there the other thing is now you can um, create a room spray which you put a few drops of oil, put it in a spray bottle, top it up with water and spray your room down or spray your pillow, spritz your pillow and bedding. So that when you're getting into your bed, you're getting into the scent. And so a, a good choice would be just simple lavender, plain on lavender would also work. Or you can also just put one or one or two drops on your pillow. So that when you lay your bed to your lay your head to, to rest, you are taking in the aromatic benefits of the oil. The other thing is to use a diffuser and you start diffusing your room at least one hour to bedtime. So that by the time you're coming in, your room is saturated with the scent. And um, I will just also issue a word here that you know some um with essential oils, especially with, with high quality essential oils, less is more. So it gets to a point where you don't want to dilute, diffuse over three hours because it gets to a point where the saturation point is reached and beyond that now you're wasting. So you'd rather diffuse in bursts, say what, a one, 30 minutes to 45 minutes, then switch it off for the night, then resume again during the day. The other way you can use your essential oils is, you know, um, in the shower in shower tank that's one of the most um, easy and effective self-care ways to incorporate essential oils so use it in a warm bath 
use it in a, in a shower and then go a step further and use essential oil based skincare like your make your body butter or your body lotion add frankincense add lavender add um what else can we add add roman chamomile for example and now complete your whole self-care skincare routine um with essential oil based products and what it does, it will help calm you, help comfort your body and your mind before bed and aromatically prepare you for the evening. So what you want to remember is you want to go, you don't, first of all, don't go to bed when you're alert, stimulated, frazzled. You're going to look like <laughs> you want to go when you're, you know, wound down, calm. And that's why it's a good idea to have a, a bath before you go to bed as well so i'm going to share with you a couple of other tip, practical tips that can help you improve your sleep one of the things is that you want to eat light at night so don't go stuffing your stomach because then it makes it really harder for digestion you want to have your heaviest meal during the day as opposed to night time so that you can give your body optimal conditions to um to manage digestion it's just like what babies are told you're told not to overfeed or overstuff babies before bed because it's actually very uncomfortable and then also try and have your last meal by 7 p.m right and then um, a night cap many people um wind down with a cup of tea and you can add in a drop of lavender or bagamot or chamomile essential oils um, to help soothe and relax your body for bed now the only thing is you want to make sure that teas that you're, you're taking are not caffeinated because we don't want to be frazzled and overly stimulated when we're getting into bed and then exercise is important but a few pointers here is you want to exercise at the right time and you want to do the right type of exercise um exercising is good for keeping weight in check and it can also help you with sleep but you don't want to exercise too close to bedtime so you don't want to be going to bed in 30 minutes that's when you're exercising um because if you exercise too much um too close to bed time obviously you will have difficult it would be very difficult for you to fall asleep and you will be overly stimulated because exercising um what does it do exercising um brings out um serotonin and the endorphins stimulates the endorphins so you don't have to go to bed and like whoa yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know let, let's get this down let's get this done but depending you can also choose like very gentle stretches to help you relax into bed as opposed to high intensity workouts just before bedtime and the other thing is, you know, want to you want to get into a routine, and this is the it's especially true of young children and babies that you know children need to be trained and need to get into a routine so that they know the lights the lights are off. You have a bath, you have some quiet time, you read a story, and this is the same thing with adults. You want to get into a routine, try to maintain a regular sleep schedule. So if you know that by ten I have to be in bed on most days and that is how it should be um try to wake up at almost at the same time every day to give yourself your body a way a rhythm a routine our bodies also thrive on rhythm and routines and this helps regulate your body's internal clock and may help you to sleep better the other thing is in as far as you're able create a haven for your sleep a haven for your sleep make sure your room is quiet is dark relaxing uh, with your bed and pillows comfortable and um, spend your last hour before bed doing a calming activity such as reading or taking a warm bath and let your bedroom be for bedroom activities only your bedroom is not an office your bedroom is not a, a dining room your bedroom is not a, a an entertainment space let your bedroom be your bedroom and then like we've talked about melatonin being uh, released during the dark darkness avoid bright light and electronics especially um what what this light has a name the light from the mobile phone and the laptops and the tv it has a name i forget it but remove all electronics from your bedroom or at least put up your, your your phone on um sleep mode airplane mode when you're sleeping try to avoid one bright light at least one hour before going to bed remember we have said that for every hour that you you spend at night you delay your melatonin release by at least three hours so darkness will help your body produce melatonin the hormone that naturally regulates sleep 
so that's about it from me for this particular sleep wellness class it was very short very concrete very concise very streamlined because we've talked about why we should be sleeping well in the first place we have talked about the sleep cycle we have talked about the circadian rhythm we've talked about the three hormones that are very important when it comes to our sleep and then we've talked about essential oils and how uh, why to use essential oils in um, for sleeping. We've talked about the characteristics that make essential oils useful in helping us sleep better. I've given you some um, science and um, aromatic compounds. The science behind why some essential oils are better suited for um, sleeping. And that was just like a small taste of what is available. But these are the most popular ones and the most effective ones. I've also talked to you about some doTERRA specific blends that are useful for sleep wellness. And then I've given you some practical tips to really just help amp up your your sleep hygiene and so i would urge you to kind of go back to the class and look and see what you can begin to do immediately to help you sleep better you will be surprised that something as simple as what something as simple as reducing dimming the lights um, would um, do for your sleep um, as usual like i said if there are if you need medical advice don't hesitate to seek out a professional to help um to help you especially when it comes to things like melatonin um and serotonin and hormone supplements please please exercise caution and seek out medical um advice i hope that this class has been useful i hope that this class has taught you something that you did not know please let me know um what was your biggest takeaway um in the comments let me know if you have any questions as regards any information that i have shared here the next class in october is going to be essential oils of the bible I'm so excited to talk about to teach this class modern uses for ancient oils so i will see you again on the first saturday of october at 11 a.m on youtube um, and you can always catch the replay and for those of you who are interested in getting doTERRA oils or bringing doTERRA oils there are a couple of options available for you you can reach out to me directly um and then just hop on to my monthly order so that when i ship i ship one if you're unsure or you don't know where to start or you just need some advice um uh, a quick consultation on where do i start call me reach out to me and let's discuss options for you based on your wellness needs um uh the main thing to note is the oils may take up to a month to get here because of logistics and all that but delivery will be made as soon as the oils get here and if you're really serious about beginning an essential oil based lifestyle you've been looking through my classes and you say i did not know that essential oils had such could be so versatile and so useful in different wellness facets and you're interested to start a serious essential oil based lifestyle reach out to me and let's talk about my 25% wholesale discount that is available to you to help get you started on this um on this path of wellness and so my friends with that of course connect with me on facebook at wellness with brie connect with me on instagram at brie orata send me an email send me a whatsapp um and I'm, I'm happy to get back to you i'm happy to um, support you i'm happy to answer your questions um especially as it relates to doTERRA essential oils and so my friends with that we come to the end of um this wellness class this is actually the shortest wellness class i have done all year but i'm grateful that you're here i'm grateful that you're watching the replay let me know if there are any classes that you would like me to to do i've got uh i've got a whole lot of classes uh planned we're going to do a frankincense class in december god willing we're going to do a class on holiday gifting in november god willing and in october we're doing oils of the bible so um thank you for joining me today thank you for joining me this month i wish you a month that is full of god's blessings and god's goodness um, may his face shine upon you may he look after you may he bless you abundantly may he do more than you are may he do exceedingly abundantly above more than what you're asking or believing him for um, may he keep you 
may he bless you until we we come together and meet again in october enjoy your weekend and enjoy your month that's it from me for now